So in this video, I'm going to talk about the propagation matrix, uh, often called P or P1 if we're talking about a specific layer. And so this is one of the two matrices, uh, the transmission matrix and the propagation matrix, that allow us to calculate the overall transfer matrix M for an optical structure. So what is the propagation matrix? Well, um, let's say we've got some materials, so N0 refractive index, N1 and N2. Um, and we know that the we've got some electric fields on each side of this matrix. So we've got some electric field traveling to the right, some plane wave traveling to the right, and some plane wave traveling to the left. And same on the other side, right? Nothing super controversial about that. Um, e are traveling or e traveling to the left. And where these fields actually come from is when we say we apply some incident electric field. Uh, we've got a reflection at this structure, reflection at this structure, infinite number of reflections, transmission from here, so on and so forth. Um, and so these are going to give rise to electric fields moving in both the left and the right hand directions. And so we want to calculate a relationship between these two fields and these two fields. And since there's two variables, this is going to take the form of a matrix. So we want ER and EL. And since this is on the, uh, on the left hand side, unfortunately, that makes our notation difficult. So I'm going to call this um, side A. And I'm going to call this side B. So we want the electric field traveling to the left and the right uh, to be equal to some matrix P uh, times the electric field traveling to the right at side B, traveling to the right at side, or traveling to the left at side B. And why, why have we written it like this? Like, why, why don't we want EB as a function of EA? And it turns out that when you go to calculate the entire transfer matrix, it'll be much simpler if you do it this way because you can just write it as, for example, D01, P1, D12, uh, P1, D12, P2, and so on and so forth. So writing it like, like this makes it very easy to write out the entire transfer matrix. And also, when I talk about these sides A and B, I mean the electric fields right at the interface. So in both cases, um, we're talking initially about the electric fields that are right at the interface, and we want to find the relationship between them. Well, let's just look at the rightward traveling electric fields for a minute. So let's erase these leftward fields. Um, what's the relationship between a plane wave that's initially here and ends up here? Well, we that's it seems really simple, right? It's just uh, so the electric field on side B uh, is just the electric field on side A. Uh, so if they're both functions of X, for example, then X just becomes, if this is say some length, uh, I'll call it L1, then this just becomes X plus L1. And okay, what do we what do we do with that, right? Because the electric field has just traveled some distance L1. So all we need to do is now write down EA of X and then figure out what EA of X plus L is. And then we'll have the relationship between EB and EX or EB and EA. All right, so what is, what is EA as a function of X? Or in general, what is the equation for a plane wave? Well, it's just some amplitude and the amplitude can be complex um, times E to the J omega t minus kx. This is for a rightward traveling, uh, so this is a rightward traveling plane wave. And if it's not, uh, if it's not just a rightward traveling plane wave, so it's traveling in some general direction k uh, or k dot r, then that's okay because we're only worried about the x component. So the math is going to be the same uh, so long as it's traveling at least partially in the in the rightward direction. Okay, so now, I mean, this is just math, right? We just plug in X plus L, uh, and that's just equal to E naught, amplitude won't change, um, E to the J, omega T minus K, so minus KX plus L, uh, or rewriting this, E naught, E to the J, 
omega t minus kx times e to the minus j k l. Okay, well that's that's exactly what um, what we wanted. We want e, we wanted e a of x plus l. And notice that we've still got our initial e a of x right here, right? This is just what we started out with, and then it's multiplied by some phase or some complex some complex number. Um, so we can just write that up here, uh, just repeat it. So e b of x is just equal to e a of x times, and let me just erase this arrow so we've got a little more space, times e to the minus j k l. And uh, so this is l1 actually, uh, right? Because we said this was, this was distance l1 just above here. And so we've got a relationship between e b of x and e a of x. It's just uh, e, the, the relationship is just e to the minus j k l. Uh, but remember, we said that we're interested in figuring out e a as a function of e b. So we're going to rewrite this as e a of x is equal to e b of x. And let me just erase this again. Um, times e to the plus j k l1. And that's just multiplying both sides by e to the j k l1. And so if we add back in the subscripts, we said these were rightward traveling waves, and we delete the function of x part, because we know that they're both functions of x. That gives us exactly what we wanted, a relationship between Ea and Eb. And this will allow us to construct our matrix. So now if we turn to the leftward traveling wave, so these are no longer rightward traveling waves, we've also got leftward traveling waves to worry about. So Eb traveling to the left, and ea traveling to the left we can write the same exact equation uh, eb as a function of x is equal to ea uh, of as a function of x plus l1 and this might look a little strange because you might say well isn't the wave traveling in the other direction and yeah you could flip this and you could say that ea is just equal to eb x minus l1 uh, and it wouldn't make a difference but um from from this equation, um, it becomes pretty clear uh, if you if you do out the math that the instead of multiplying by e to the plus j k l one, we now need to to get the relationship between e a and e b that we want. Um, we see that e a is equal to e b. These are the leftward traveling waves times e to the minus j k one l one. And if we're being precise, this should be the all these k's should be k one right, because k is going to change depending on which layer you, that you're in. And so we've got the two equations that we need. So here's the one for our rightward traveling wave, which I'm just gonna rewrite both of them up here. Um, so we said that Ea, uh, rightward traveling wave, is equal to Eb, the rightward traveling wave, times e to the plus j, a1, l1, and Ea, uh, the leftward traveling wave, just equal to this, oh, no, not equal sign, um, times e to the minus j k1 l1. So how do we convert this into a matrix? Well, it's a really simple matrix, right? There's only one coefficient, or there's only two coefficients that we have to worry about. Um, so if we're interested in forming a matrix between ea uh, right and ea left, that's equal to some matrix times EB traveling to the right and EB traveling to the left. You'll see that these matrix uh, coefficients, well, if we just do out the multiplication, uh, M11, M12, M21, or actually this is the propagation matrix P, so let's call these um, P11, P12, P21, and P22. You'll see that uh, P11 is just equal to e to the plus j, K1, L1, and P22 is equal to e to the minus j, K1, L1. And the other two coefficients are just equal to zero. So we can just write that in here. So our propagation matrix, K1, L1, is just equal to this. 
and that's that's it that's all we need to calculate the the transfer matrix was so this propagation matrix and the transmission matrix and so you now know everything you need in order to calculate the transfer matrix of a of an optical system i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them down below and if you like the video please consider liking it or subscribing to my channel and i'll see you next time thanks